Hello and a warm welcome. Our webinar goes out to our customers, students, interested engineers, but last but not least, our competition. My name is Emilio Meza, and I am your moderator for today's webinar titled Efficient Green Hydrogen Production with Power Electronic Stacks. Producing green hydrogen calls for efficient water electrolysis, reduced current ripple, and grid harmonic increase water electrolysis efficiency. Uh, however, this is often requires uh, tailor-made power electronics. Simicron offers extensive expertise to support power supply development for efficient green hydrogen production. Timo Gassauer will explain the wide range of products, assemblies, and services that Simicron can provide. Before we get started with the presentation, some words about our webinar platform. In case of connection issues to the presentation stream or to the sound, please try to reconnect using the button on the very top of your browser window. In your browser, on the right-hand side, you see the chat window, which you can actually hide to increase the presentation window. In case you have any comments or difficulties, please let us know via the chat. All messages are private and only we can see them. If you have any questions about the content, please mark your comments as a question with the Q&A mode button. We will try to answer your questions at the end of the presentation. And the questions we do not manage to answer today will then be answered by email during the next days. Also, you can send us an email to webinar at semicron.com at any time, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Finally, we will also share the slides as a PDF at the very end of the presentation. You will see the download button just below the chat window. Your presenter today is Timo Gassauer. Timo graduated in 2004 from University of Applied Science in Stuttgart with a bachelor degree in electrical engineering. He worked as development engineer before joining Simicron in 2008. Between 2012 and 2016, Timo worked for Simicron Asia as product manager in Hong Kong and South Korea. Today, he holds an MBA from IE Business School and works here in Germany as head of product line stacks advancing global growth opportunities of Simicron Stack Business. Enjoy the webinar. Timo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you for the warm welcome. And it's also, I'm uh, greeting everybody outside for the webinar. I'm excited to, to introduce you to a nice topic um, about green hydrogen, a big, big uh, major topic for the, for the future where everybody talks about right now. And I would like to really uh, to start a discussion and also spark discussion with you about how power electronics can support this um, this future with a green hydrogen production. So let me introduce you to the agenda. I want to talk first about a quick introduction about the green hydrogen, what it is and how power electronics, what role power electronics plays in this field. Switching up um, to topologies for DC power supplies, there are several in already in use and some in discussion, which I would like to introduce to you. And then following this, some products and services Semicron has to offer to support you in this market. And summing up with the conclusion about the presentation. So let's jump into the topic, green hydrogen. Why hydrogen? What is hydrogen? Hydrogen is the simplest element on Earth. It consists of only one proton, one electron, and it's an energy carrier. Hydrogen can store and deliver usable energy. However, it doesn't exist by itself in nature and must be produced from compounds and contain it. Global hydrogen production is right now mainly from natural gas, coal, or oil by using a reformation process. And this represents around 96% of today's hydrogen production. This is what is for, uh, based on fossil fuel. However, this gray or fossil fuel hydrogen also causes a significant amount of CO2 emissions. On the other side, green hydrogen, that's what we talk about when we uh, create, um, produce hydrogen with the support of renewable energy. This makes no contribution to climate change at all. It produces by water it, um, electrolysis based on a renewable energy source like hydro, solar, or wind. It's a process of splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen by applying a direct current. So that converting electricity into chemical energy. 
The use of the water electrolysis process represents today around 4% of the global hydrogen production. Significant increase is required to come to a net um, zero economy. Today, the primary demand for hydrogen is based on refining and ammonia production. However, several multiple sectors um, use or is expecting to use hydrogen to enable zero or near zero emissions. So there are many emerging markets to come up. So green, hy green hydrogen might be the key to reduce emissions, especially for energy intensive sectors like steel or chemical industry. However, there are several challenges. So hydrogen must be produced using electricity coming from renewable energy in terms of being green. So electricity cost plays a major role. So it has to be the abundance electricity used, which we can probably cannot use in the grid from solar and wind, can be used to create hydrogen. But there are also other sectors like uh, transport sectors and different applications, like uh, end use where uh, fuel cell plays a role and so on. Also, these sectors, power electronics is important and uh, a lot of um, developments going on in these sectors. However, if you want to talk about uh, um, about fuel cells and so on, I think a complete different webinar could be uh, could be filled in the topics. Hence, if you have any questions about fuel cell and power electronics for fuel cell, please feel free to contact us. Today, we only focus on the production side of the water uh, electrolysis. And the the, the, big, the major challenge of um, of green hydrogen is the cost, electricity cost and investment cost. So a big learning curve still is ahead of us in order to come down at parity with um, hydrogen used or created from different sources. So more than 30 countries worldwide have a clear roadmap towards hydrogen, either production and also application side. More than 200 hydrogen projects are already um, started or announced and more than $70 billion in public funding are committed by the governments worldwide. So there's a lot of activities ongoing and development in order to improve the uh, efficiency and also the, um, the future for, for green hydrogen. If you look at the key technologies, there are two major types of electrolyzers, which are right now commercially available, alkaline electrolyzers and proton exchange membrane electrolyzers, suitable for high power. Alkaline is the most true technology right now, spread around the world, and commonly used for large-scale large, large scale systems. The advantage is the longer lifespan, and also because of um, cheaper catalysts than PEM electrolyzers having lower cost. But there are some drawbacks, like a lower current density and um, also a different response time or a slower response time in a dynamic environment. This is due to the liquid electrolyte leading to um, a more inertia and, and, and um, slower uh, transportation of ions, and that reduces the response time, which is makes it a little bit unsuitable for uh, renewable energy. On the other side, um, PEM electrolysis has um, lower stack voltages. However, it can be connected in series to form a multi-stack electrolyzer for large uh, systems. And that has some advantages, like um, higher current density, higher cell voltage, and a faster system response time. So that makes it quite suitable for also connecting directly, not only to the grid, but also to renewable energy system. And renewable energy systems depend a lot on the weather conditions, which can vary um, very abruptly during the operation. And also it requires that all available power must be converted into hydrogen. For this reason, the converter also need a kind of maximum power point um, tracking. So both alkaline and PEM electrolyzers must be um, supported by a DC current, which is supplied by a DC power supply. 
But the power converter slightly, dec um, slightly decreases the overall efficiency of the system. Uh, so um, the efficiency of the um, DC power supply plays a crucial role for both of them. So it is important to understand the interaction between the AC-DC power supply and the electrolyzer, particularly from the efficiency point of view and the lifespan point of view. So as of today, thyrus or diode rectifier DC and DC choppers are mainly used to supply uh, electrolyzers. All types of DC power supplies present certain advantages and drawbacks, um, which we will discuss in the, in the next part. But they have all in common that there are certain requirements of the DC supply, uh, power supply to support an efficient electrolysis process. Among others are a good efficiency value, low harmonics to comply with grid standards, lower ripple current, and uh, fast dynamic performance and fault robustness. To maximize the reduced hydrogen, uh, it should be used. Uh, it should be operated at rated power to get the best efficiency um, and deliver voltage with reduced ripple. Also important, especially if it's connected to renewable energy systems, where um, the efficiency or the fluctuation of um, is, is uh, plays a major role. So we see different topologies depending on how um, the electrolyzer is connected, either to the grid, then you have an AC-DC uh, converter and a DC chopper sometimes, optional, or connected to renewables directly, where if it's wind connected, you have an AC-DC and a DC chopper, or connected to solar directly with a DC-DC. So in detail, the, the main requirements are current control, in order to deliver a controlled DC current to manage the hydrogen flow rate and the energy efficiency of the electrolyzer. High power factor and low reactive power. Although um, it, um, the DC power supply must also compensate the reactive power. The power quality plays a major role. Yeah. And the low, low current harmonics injected in the AC power supply. Higher system efficiency, as I mentioned, right? Because um, efficiency plays also a role for the whole system in order to get the best out of this uh, investment. Reliability, fault robustness to guarantee a long lifetime. And also, very important, a low output current ripple. The, a low DC output current ripple is one of the most important requirements. In, in order to optimize the specific energy consumption and reliability of the system. A high ripple increases the specific energy consumption and as a result lowers hydrogen quantity which is produced based on the same amount of energy. So overall reducing the energy efficiency. And it also has an influence on the gas quality generated by the electrolyzer. So here, the target is to be as low as possible. And of course, overall, the system has to have a low complexity. All these points are complementary, but also um, opposite. So if you improve the one point, you will have some drawbacks on the other points. And the topologies, we go through all of them to, this, to see how we can improve them. So there are different use cases, all the different power ratings we see in the in uh, in the market, not only on the type of electrolyzers, but also which con which uh, how is the connection to the grid, how is the system, um, how is the power electronic conversion then? So for the lower power sites, 30 kilowatt up to one megawatt, which is typically connected to medium voltage and low voltage, and or low voltage grid um, or renewable energy directly, um, often use transformer, especially on the higher power side but also active rectifier, which uh, allows a direct connection to the grid, IGBT chopper, and usually the power electronics is um, air and liquid cooled. For the one megawatt to five megawatt side, it's uh, often uh, uncontrolled controlled rectifier used for the conversion, uh, including an IGBT chopper, and we already see most of the time water cooled uh, systems.
above five megawatt here it's all water cooled and classically diode thyristor based uh, systems um, connected to a transformer connecting directly to a medium voltage grid so having the basics Let's jump into the topologies, in the different topologies we see for the DC power supply in order to serving the electrolyzer. Let's start with the simplest one. It's uh, the uncontrolled AC-DC converter, show a, a fixed DC voltage output. The main advantage of this topology is its cheap cost. A good rectification ratio, small ripple factor, and a good efficiency and as the output voltage is quite low, a uh, small or no additional filter is required. However, this topology delivers only a constant output voltage and current to supply the electrolyzer. So the value depends on the AC power supply. So it's not an optimal solution for, for uh, the use for electrolyzers. In order to... Um, Consider high power, you see on the right side a 12 pulse solution. On the, on the left side, the six pulse, on the right side, a 12 pulse solution. So, this is a major advantage for increasing the output current. And uh, in, in parallel and using in series, you can increase the output voltage. Compared to the six pulse diode rectifier, it offers a better rectification ratio and a, even a lower uh, ripple factor. The major drawback still is this topology is a lack of uncontrolled output, of uh, lack of uncontrolled output. So you see here, um, this on the right side, I show you an example of a stack we realized in the past for different applications, um, but that could be a fit, a nice fit for um, the DC power supply for electrolysis. This is a liquid cooled rectifier. So this topology, a controlled rectifier based on thyristor technology, this is dominated, um, dominate actually the market right now for, um, in, in this application. They feature a very high and good efficiency. So compared to the rectifiers based on diodes, they deliver a controlled current, which is needed to manage um, hydrogen flow rate and the energy, uh, in, uh, the energy efficiency. Despite the fact that these Rectifiers are mature, efficient, and reliable, a good control of the current, they suffer of certain um, drawbacks like low power quality and injecting reactive power into the grid and having a high DC current ripple. The control of the thyristor based rectifier is carried out through their firing angle. And controlling the rectifier excites higher amplitude current harmonics on both AC and DC side of the rectifier. Especially on the, on the partial load conditions, the power factor is, is quite low. The rectifier power causes additional losses in the conductor and a transformer and active compensation with additional power electronics is required to increase the power factor. The thyristor um, rectifier excited current ripple causes additional heat losses in the electrolyzer and the fluctuation also ex um, accelerates cell degradation. Current ripple can be reduced by using passive filters between the rectifier and the electrolyzer but also for high power this adds additional complexity and system. So in order to face the power quality and current ripple issue, a 12 pulse Cyrus the bridge rectifier can be used. The two secondaries are coupled in delta and or in star um, configuration. And this is suitable for um, requiring high current. This topology features several benefits um, over the six pulse rectifier, especially the ripple factor is lower and the specific consumption, energy consumption is lower and the quality of the produced hydrogen is better. So this is actually a quite nice solution so far. And on the right side, you see an example uh, of a liquid cooled rectifier with an isolated cooler, which we have already um, designed. 
the 12 pulse cyrister bridge um, enables eliminating the odd harmonics, consequently reducing the reactive power and increasing the power factor. However, still filters are required. It's a, a, a good topology for high voltage and high current applications. Um, but still, the specific energy consumption is still higher than a reference with a pure DC current on the electrolyzer. Here you see an example, a configuration example using a 12 pulse thyristor um, rectifier with a connected to electrolyzer and then a filter and also an active filter power quality compensator using additional IGBT technology. Of course, this also can be realized with power electronics with a stack, just an example I have shown here with the semi cube slim line. But further down the road, the combination of um, a rectifier, an uncontrolled rectifier, for example, or an active front end with a buck converter allows further re to reduce the output current ripple and the power quality of the system. This combination probably uh, improves the power factor without using bulky low harmonic passive filters or any other power electronic solution, which makes the system less complex. The current control is realized through the step-down converter to manage the hydrogen flow rate. And this circuit allows switching, frequency, uh, switching frequencies much higher than line frequency. And for this reason, reactive elements have smaller values in general. And the dynamic of the system is faster. So here you see three different type of buck converters. You see uh, one single leg, a three inter interleaved um, buck converter and a three level buck converter. In detail, this could look like this. So on, you have four, four different topologies. On the top left corner here, you have a um, configuration using a six pulse diode rectifier connected to a step down DC DC converter. The AC voltage, um, it converted into a DC voltage for an average DC voltage. And then you have a DC DC converter control the current. The higher the inductor and the switching frequency, the lower the current ripple, which the, um, then is, is served to the electrolyzer. Higher, switch, um, higher inductor value leads to higher cost and volume. Higher switching frequencies can reduce the inductor size but increases losses. So different solutions could be, could be considered. Yeah? Um, especially also, for example, silicon carbide, white band, white band gap materials could be an option here. Nevertheless, the power level is limited due to the use of a single power switch. So we have the um, alternative, the next, um, using a three phase interleaf buck converter here on the, on the lower side. So in, in order to in decrease the output current ripple, a six pulse diode bridge rectifier connected to a three phase interleaf buck converter is shown. The choice of the three phase is a compromise between output current ripple and volume and the efficiency and reliability of the system. The efficiency improvement is done by the, by the current is shared by the three different uh, inductors. Compared to a classic DC chopper, it enables decreasing the, the output current ripple while preserving the reliability of the electrolyzer. In terms of power quality, a three-phase interleaf buck converter offers the same benefits like, um, like a standard buck converter. For high current applications, the six pulse rectifier can be um, ex exchanged by a 12 pulse rectifier as, as shown here and explained in the, uh, previously. But of course, it leads to additional complexity. Here is an example of a three level uh, topology, which um, increases the output voltage and uh, increases uh, the energy efficiency due to its uh, lower step down voltage conversion. It can reduce the voltage stress of the power electronics devices while keeping 
um, as the same there a very low output current ripple of the system towards the electrolyzer. Here in this picture showing you like a system topology can look like where you have um, on the electrolyzer side you have the three interleaved back converter you have the two uh, the 12 pulse uncontrolled rectifier um, for rectifying the from ac to dc connecting to the transformer passive filter and that could be a system using um, igbt for for the back converter the advantages versus a single and an interleaved, as I just explained, is that it's another improvement in the uh, in the current ripple and in the reliability of the system. A back converter can be realized, for example, one of our semi-cube stacks, semi-cube slim line, um, where you have three phase and connected to an interleaved converter. Just to, um, to also um, get a complete picture, this topology is not so often used right now in uh, for electrolyzers so far. However, it also has certain advantages, especially if it's connected to a renewable energy system, having an active front end, um, which improves the grid disturbances at a certain flexibility um, with uh, combining an active front end with a DC buck converter. It has certain advantages and also if um, in terms of high power, um, we also, for example, can show one solution with a semi-stack RE, high power, we connect stacks together to create an active front end and a, a buck converter and adding also in uh, adding in parallel so we can reach high power um, with this topology. Of course, we see a very good factor in, in a good, very good power factor is possible, very good uh, current harmonics are possible, uh, current ripple is possible. However, they ad adding on power electronic, which adds to the complexity of the system. To fulfill um, the finalized topologies, we uh, show you here one example using a standard uh, or using one single rectifier, um, an uncontrolled rectifier or an active front end, and um, with several back converters, which are each connected to an electroly electrolyzer stack. And the advantage here is um, it enables to control each electrolyzer stack through a DC-DC converter. Um, it improves or optimizes energy efficiency um, due to the lower duty cycle and also um, supplies the electrolyzer at rated power to optimize the energy efficiency and the flow rate of the, elect of the hydrogen. Uh, so that is a, a quite nice solution. However, you need several buck converter, which adds up on the power electronic side. Here you have an example using one diode or thyrus or uncontrolled rectifier stack um, for the for the for the front end for the rectifier, and then having one stack, for example, in um, in, in a cabinet in uh, together, each supplying one electrolyzer stack. So far, the electrolyzers are supplied by controlled rectifiers and or IGBT choppers. The circuits are constrained by the management of the high current. Um, the use of thyristor makes these converters reliable, but implies the generation of harmonics towards the grid and also um, ripple current at the output. So we see we have seen different topologies um, like uh, six pulse controlled and uncontrolled rectifier. Well, the advantage, of course, it, it's this simplicity. simplicity. Um, however, yeah, we see harmonics and uh, are injected into the AC and also DC side, um, reducing the power quality, and they are not very practical in this for this kind of application. Um, Twelve pulse, especially on the higher power side, uh, makes makes more sense. Um, the controlled rectifier, of course, uh, has advantage of a controlled current. Um, there is uh, no no additional chopper required. Um, however, still 
active power compensation power um, is uh, reactive power compensation is required adds to the complexity of the complete system. An uncontrolled rectifier with a buck converter uh, creates good um, yeah pays pays into the harmonics and and the power quality um, has a very good output ripple. Uh, however, you need a full rated chopper on the outside. An active front end, of course, provides the most flexible solution uh, with a great power, power quality, uh, proven technology. However, it decreases again to uh, complexity. So modern topologies improve the DC power quality um, and probably mitigate the need for reactive power compensation. Future challenges need to be solved due to the massive uh, also use or increasing use of renewable energy and its conversion to improve the the, the system um, combination between renewable energy power dc power supply and electrolyzer so in order to improve or to to maximize the stack the, the electrolyzer stack F energy efficiency the lifetime um, it is somehow required also that electrolyzer manufacturers define and provide um, what would would be the optimal uh, or what is the maximum allowed DC side uh, current ripple? What is the demand on the power quality side in order to get the best out of their system? And of course, it depends also on uh, how is the power supply connected between electrolyzer and um, is it connected to the grid or to a renewable energy source? So there's a lot of developments ongoing in this area. And um, I'm, I'm, we are very curious about what the future demand. Um, Semicron is definitely ready to support uh, with our um, comprehensive product portfolio and services. And this I would like to introduce you in the next section. So on the, on the module side, uh, module um, component side, we have um, on the one side the diode thyristor module for the uncontrolled and controlled rectification, uh, starting from low power uh, with the semi parks and uh, disk components as well for, for higher power rating. Um, and on the IGBT side for active rectification and buck converter, having a complete portfolio from uh, low power with the semi trans, semi trans uh, 10, 20 modules, skim up to skip. Which, which is our most powerful IPM um, up to 3,600 amp. On the stack side, um, what this is what I what I show here is some examples we have already uh, designed. Um, and on the on the left side, we have for um, natural and forced air cooled rectifier solutions, which we provided so far up to 2,580 um, ampere. Um, these stacks are module and disk based and um, are available as 6 and 12 pulse uh, rectifiers. Um, a big part of these stacks we also have uh, available on our online shop. So um, I invite you to have a look in the online shop to have a, a first um, idea about what stacks are available, but also we can discuss about what kind of power rating, what kind of optimized stacks you require uh, in order to fulfill your demand. On the liquid side, uh, liquid cool um, rectifier, we provide uh, kind of two versions. One is with an isolated cooler, which helps you to reduce the system complexity. Um, and this stacks we realized up to one to 3,175 amps. Um, also available as six or 12 pulse rectifier. And we have um, with a standard cooler where you go uh, even up to 5,000 amp, um, providing the highest power, uh, higher power density and um, also 6 and 12 pulse rectifier diode or thyristor available. For active front ends or back converter, um, there's also designs already available like uh, um, a power cell, which is a complete power supply from 50 kilowatt, um, which includes an active front end and a galvanic isolated DC-DC, um, which can be stacked up in parallel up to 10 pieces, up to 500 kilowatt, which could be a nice solution. Um, on the higher power side, we provide um, air-cooled stacks, 200 kilowatt up to one megawatt. Um, example is SemiCube Slimline, uh, which is ready available. Uh, it's a three-phase stack, easily to configure as an active front-end or in DC buck 
converter, um, providing a very, very compact design um, to, to the system. On the liquid cooled stack, we even go beyond one megawatt um, and to parallel uh, switching or well, connecting parallel, going even up to five megawatt for the system. This, um, I, the picture I show here is the semi stack RE. Um, it's a three phase stack, active front end, or can be configured as an active front end or also as a DC buck converter. Um, but you see here, they, they are two stacks connected on the DC bus, which uh, con can be used as active front end and DC bus together or even connected parallel to increase the power rating. In order to support development um, at, at our customers, there is uh, this 100 kilo evaluation box available. It's um, including two stacks from our side using an, uh, could, could be used as an active front end and an interleaved um, three phase back converter. Um, it is specifically developed for engineering uh, support that really with, um, with a fast system, you can develop your, your software, you can develop your configuration. Um, it includes um, semi skip based uh, IGBT stacks, uh, including also a con controller. And uh, you can use your own controller. You can also use this controller, use your own software, or we can provide you also with a reference software. So here, supporting your uh, your development efforts um, using different configurations, different topologies to get the best out of the system. Last but not least, it's um, showing you the standard stacks, uh, the designs we have already realized in the past. Um, this, we also do, not only this, we also do custom specific developments uh, depending on demand and requirements you have. And this, what we, this is what we do based on, um, of course, existing designs, existing products we have, um, optimizing these products based on your requirements in order to optimize the system um, specifically for you and in not only reinventing the wheel uh, every time new, we support you with um, yeah, um, optimizing the design we have for quick de deployment or quick development schedule and deployment. Here, our engineers and application engineers um, worldwide are waiting for a discussion with you about um, an optimal um, system or stack design. So overall, our power electronic stacks area, we have more than 200,000 stacks already in the field in different applications like uh, solar, wind, um, energy storage, um, and also hydrogen generation production, of course. And the, the key capabilities are definitely that we, based on, on optimized um, requ on the requirements, um, making the best IGBT chip, and driver selections to choose the right product, the right chipsets um, for each application and, and requirements, but then creating also the mechanical design based on um, an efficient cabinet integration and including our um, long-term and vast experience in, in cooling, um, air-cooled or uh, air-cooled as well as liquid-cooled. Now, then further, um, on the on the after the development going into a validation qualification of our of our products which we do in our facilities um, with equipment up to megawatt level and uh, doing burn-in tests shock and vibration um, tests um, in-house last but not least at the production side we have a standardized controlled manufacturing process on each of our locations manufacturing locations which are close um, at our customer site worldwide um, we have four for production locations and also take care of that um, we only take use uh, products based from qualified vendors to guarantee really the um, high reliable and secure products. So overall with the power electronic stacks, we support you for quick time to market with solutions which are already available or designed based on requirements, uh, on your requirements, custom specific. Um, we have four production locations um, in South America, North America, in Asia, and in Europe. Um, so we are close at your site um, where we can connect together and discuss your needs and support you with custom engineering and also our, um, in including 
uh, or manufacturing process really to supply your green hydrogen project as efficient as possible. So that brings me already to the conclusion. Um, green hydrogen is a promising solution to enable low carbon economy in the future. However, a steep learning curve and scale up is required to uh, become competitive compared to the conventional hydrogen production. Um, power electronics play a crucial role in this and it enables efficient and reliable green hydrogen production. Um, stacks, our power electronic stacks can enable fast um, development and deployment of the green hydrogen, of your green hydrogen projects. We are ready to support um, you with our product portfolio, with our assemblies, but also with custom solution. Um, and so please feel free, contact us. Let's have an in-depth discussion um, and define the perfect solution for your requirements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the great presentation, Timo. And to the audience, I have actually just shared the PDF version of this presentation, which you can now download. Um, we did receive some questions during the presentation, so we can spend the next few minutes going through those. Um, if you have any questions um, that we can answer on top of these, please write those to us and we will try to get to those today. If we miss any, we will um, follow up with any emails as best as we can. So um, getting started here, there were some people that were asking about the, the need for the buck converter, the DC to DC converter. One specifically asking, why do we need it for the wind application? Um, so why do we need the DC to DC converter here? Um, so you have um, with renewable energy or with a wind converter, you have a flexible output of the wind depending on the wind speed. Um, so you have um, you had, you don't you need to rectify or you, you rectify um, to a DC voltage. However, then you need a, you need to apply a, um, you need to apply a DC current to the electrolyzer depending on the on the electrolyzer requirement. So you have to. Um, yeah, you have to convert it to the right um, current. That's why you need a DC DC. You cannot just um, you have a flexible input source, so you need to have um, defined output. Okay, and so if we were coming from the grid side, would a thyristor stack be enough to handle it for the direct to uh, electro electrolyzer? Um, probably there. It, it would probably cause um, huge disturbance, also uh, huge disturbance on the on the harmonic side as well and on the electrolyzer side. So it is more rec recommended to use um, uh, an, an controlled rectifier, but then with a DC or an uncontrolled rectifier, then with a DC um, con back converter. Okay. And so there's a question here more about lifetime and it's it's looking at the output ripple of the rectifier saying how does it depend um how does that affect lifetime but i'll say in general what are the items that could affect lifetime for these types of stacks now the the ripple is um disadvantaged for the lifetime of the electrolyzer because it um it increases the heat losses of the electrolyzer and that's um yeah pushing the cell degradation of the system and hence reducing the lifetime. Oh. Okay. So, but so that affects the electrolyzer and not the uh, power electronic stack. Yeah, exactly. So when we talk about um, the DC current ripple output, it affects the electrolyzer stack. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, we have to be careful with these stack words. They get mixed up pretty easily. Um, and true. you mentioned that um, active front ends are not um, currently used a lot at the moment. Is there any reason for this? I expect it is um, so far on, it adds additional power electronics. So um, the complexity increases of the system. So it has to justify the benefits um, of it. So right now we are looking at, at high power um, installations or, or uh, high power um, um, hydrogen production sites. And here it is, um, well, the, the cost versus the, the balance between the cost and the system efficiency, right, has to be found out. And right now, I think it's it's still um, on the thyristor side. However, 
with improving power electronics, uh, having better power electronics, also using more renewable energy connected systems, it becomes more interesting or more important to use also active front end system. Um, so it depends on how is it connected to, to wind, is it connected to the grid? Um, and it's always about finding the balance. Um, as I said in, in the presentation several times, it's like um, these seven points which are important, um, they are sometimes counteract. So if you improve the one, you have a disadvantage of the other one. Um, and it's all about finding the balance. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. There is a question about, let's see, a rectifier on slide 17. It's saying, what power class would this be used in? Um, this this oh, IGBT stack here? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. So one stack here could be up to 1.4 megawatt. Um, so either you, you can parallel all these four together. So coming up to uh, three, four megawatt systems. Or you can use it as an active front end and a DC DC combined together, uh, connected, yeah, for for two two point four megawatt. Okay. So one one stack is one point up to one point four megawatt, depending on on the exact ratings power uh, specification. Okay, so roughly one point four megawatt per per stack, and there's mm -hmm. four there. Yeah. Okay, and then there's another question about the stacks specifically. You you'd shown a few of these stacks. Are the inductors for the buck located? on the stack or are they external to these stacks? The inductors would be external. Yeah. So on the stack, we have uh, the power electronics, we have a driver, we have the capacitors, um, cooling, but um, all the externals or inductors, for example, are external, connected. Yeah. OK. Um, and then what kind of efficiencies would we be seeing in the actor front end and buck converter? Depends very much on the operating point, on the power, on um, many specific. Um, I think it is in a different range. Um, if if you look at uh, Cyrus the base, probably it's in the above ninety seven percent ratings. Here the power electronics probably ninety four percent and and higher. So it depends on the on the configuration on on a system level. Yeah. Okay. And, and there's one question here about using um, a three-level diode TNPC topology. Is that possible or would that be useful? A three-level approach with TNPC? It, it depends very much. Of it. Could could look at it. Um, it is it 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 is one possibility, um, which has probably it, uh, has its advantages. If that is reasonable if that is uh, justifying the complexity of a three level um would need to look at the specific requirements uh, of of the system right um i showed one which is connected to to wind for example um there it could have a certain advantage in terms of um yeah reducing the the voltage stress on the on the igbt on, on the on the on the igbts yeah. okay um let's see and then i'll say that there there was some confusion about one of the questions um about the six pulse versus the 12 pulse so i'll just summarize real quickly and say um in a six pulse application versus the 12 pulse basically the 12 pulse is phase shifted so with this you you basically have the double the number of pulses per fundamental cycle reducing the current ripple just all as a small addition there and let's see then one last question I see here, and then we'll we'll stop for the time being. Um, someone had asked, uh, is this not useful when the power is supplied by solar PV or wind turbine? So in your opinion, is this technology useful when supplied by um, solar or, or wind? Um, the, the question is if, uh, hydrogen production makes sense if it's um, connected with wind, wind or solar. I think that's a probably a big discussion going on. And of course, it makes sense to have excess energy of the wind and solar, uh, which is not introduced into the grid um, to use it or to store it in terms of uh, creating hydrogen and, and having then... Uh, 
material which I can can store or transport. Uh, that that surely makes sense. Um, if it is commercially viable, that that's a topic, and I think some uh, a lot of um, research going on in this area. But definitely, it makes sense to 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 use the excess of energy, which is um, yeah, n n which cannot be used in the grid. Okay, very good. I think that's everything that we'll we'll do for today. Thank you very much. And if there are any questions, um, please feel free to email us at webinar at semicron.com. So, th Timo, thank you very much again um, to the audience. Thank you for joining the webinar today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you could take away some useful information. Please join us for future webinars and have a great day. Bye-bye.